how are you? How are you? (laughs) You have some time? Yeah, I have a couple minutes. Great. That's the perfect amount of time to answer some questions for me. (laughs) Come on in. Thank you. So what's your name? I'm Dr. Joyce Kong. And what's your specialty? I'm a cosmetic dentist. And so how long have you been out of school for? Uh, I graduated 2010. So it's at 14 years. Something like that. That sounds about right. Yeah. Where'd you go to undergrad? I went to UOP. I did a accelerated program that was three years of undergrad and then three years of dental school. Oh wow, that's quick. And where'd you do your residency? Mm, in the Bronx, at Jacoby. So where are you originally from? I'm from Northern California. I went to Los Gatos High School. And how long have you owned this practice? <sighs> I took over 2014, so we're coming on 10 years. This office is pretty unique. Did you design it? Me? Uh, no, I could never design this. My um, my designer is actually Laura Brophy, so I hired her and then she did this whole thing and I love the way it turned out. We just did this last year. And what inspired this design? Well, Pinterest. <laughs> I basically took a lot of photos from Pinterest and then she made it our own. And I really wanted the office to have a lot of special touches, like, you know, this type of wall, all the fixtures, they're all unique pieces that only um, she could really find. I could never find these like, online by myself. Now, these are really unique. This tree is pretty cool. I what love is it? this tree. This is my olive tree. I just got this tree, so it's still alive. I had a, originally had another tree and it died. And it's funny because um, this office is like, has a very indoor outdoor effect. And my designer initially wanted to bring that in. So we are going to cut into the ground and um, put the tree in the ground inside the practice. So it kind of looks like indoor outdoor. We scrapped that because I was kind of like scared that we were going to kill the tree, and we did. So <laughs> thankfully we didn't do that, but I love this tree. I hope it stays alive. It's my baby. So what was your part, favorite part of dental school? My friends. So you are a cosmetic dentist. Yeah. Are there any other specialties you're thinking about doing? Um, yeah. You know, I graduated so young that people kept saying you should you should specialize. So I really thought about doing endo, which is like root canals. I just like the precise nature of it. And the other thing that I was thinking about doing is pedo, which is kids dentistry. Thankfully, I didn't do that. I'm not good with kids, but I didn't know that, you know, early on. I just assumed I'd be good with kids. It takes a special person. <laughs> So for those who aren't familiar with cosmetic dentistry, what type of procedures does that entail? Mostly, we do porcelain veneers, we do composite veneers, lots of composite bonding, bioclear, we do teeth whitening, Invisalign. It could be really anything. And sometimes it's not even like those procedures. Sometimes it's like cutting away some of the gums, just balancing things out so that people are just more confident with their smiles. Okay. So what happens in an average day for you then? An average day. Well, it depends. Mondays and Wednesdays, I have a hygienist here. So I'm doing hygiene checks while also doing restorative dentistry, usually Mondays and Wednesdays. Tuesdays and Fridays, I don't have a hygienist because I like to do my cosmetic procedures that day and I do not like to be disturbed. Are there any stereotypes about a cosmetic dentist? I think so. I think people think cosmetic dentists live a very glamorous lifestyle (laughs) and they're all rich and all that stuff. But I would say that me and my husband live pretty frugal, normal lives. Normal? I don't know. I don't really know. (laughs) Wait, but truthfully, are you always analyzing people's teeth? It's kind of a disease the trick is though i don't make it a thing like a weird awkward thing where i'm staring staring and also i don't bring it up like unless somebody asks me specifically about their smile i will not tell them they need to fix anything because you don't want to make something a problem when it's not so it looks like you've invested a lot into this office what amenities do you have for your patients um well 
I have a thing about amenities. I feel like dental practices have gone like really over the top with amenities. And I used to have like a coffee bar in my office when I first took over because every office was doing that. And I had patients that would come just to drink coffee. And it wasn't even good coffee. It was like Keurig coffee. Got rid of that. I decided to only have amenities that directly impact their care and their, um, their experience while they're sort of in the chair. Um, and I'll show you some of those later. Yeah, who wants to brush, who wants to clean teeth when they have coffee breath, right? <laughs> this sign is really cool. What is this about and where'd you get it? Oh, this is, this is the name of the practice. Um, there was a really talented guy named Kyle Rizunko. He hand lettered all of this and also up there, the citrus and bloom, he hand painted all of that for us and he's just, can you imagine how precise you have to be to get that? It looks so good. I love the way that this turned out as well. And how did you come up with the name Orange and Magnolia Dental Studio? I know, it's it's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. People are often asking like, why? Um, so my practice is super small and we're at the cross streets of Orange and Magnolia. And there was always this violin studio that I imagined us moving the practice to and I've like emailed them like are you selling your your property and they're not interested in selling but there's always like a little bit of a, a dream I guess that we would move up to a bigger space and I always want to say like okay well our humble roots were from the cross streets of Orange and Magnolia. <laughs> so do you do your husband's dental care? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I would be his go-to. My husband's also a dentist. <laughs> That's crazy you guys are both dentists. How come you guys don't work together? I think we kill each other. Yeah. Okay, seriously though. <laughs> okay, so seriously though, who is the better dentist? Mm, I think that we are better at different procedures. Like for me, I, I haven't extracted a tooth in years. So I... I'm good at cosmetic dentistry. Meanwhile, my husband's really good at surgeries and he's also really good at the practice management side or dealing with employees and stuff like that. Me, not so good. <laughs> so how many people work here then? Right now, I have a front desk lady, I have a hygienist, and I have a dental assistant and then me. So it's, it's we have a small and mighty team. So do they call you Dr. Joyce? Or yeah. do they call you Dr. Kong? They call, oh no, no. Well, patients sometimes call me Dr. Joyce, but um, all my employees call me Dr. Kong. And that's, a, that's an interesting question because I've never really thought about that. They just are so, so respectful and I've never had to like ask them to call me doctor. And it's just automatic. Are there any other doctors here? There used to be. Um, Dr. Julian, there was once an associate and she was there for like five years but sadly we don't have her anymore i miss her so what made you open your own office after being an associate dentist well i never actually wanted to be a practice owner and the more i worked for other people the more i realized i hated working for other people so i decided to open my own that's not really a good reason but I knew there was a better way of doing dentistry and the only way I would be able to do dentistry the way I wanted to do it is if I was the boss. Okay, well speaking about doing dentistry, what's your favorite procedure to do? Probably porcelain veneers. I just feel like there's such a difference in the way that patients walk into the office after they've gotten their smile makeover. It's, just, it's like so inspiring to see them walk with so much confidence. And what is your least favorite procedure? Um, the MOD. <laughs> what is the MOD? It's a class to, it's like, it's like, for layman's terms, it's like when a cavity is in between both of the sides of the teeth, like this is the top of the tooth. But if it's also in between where people are not flossing, then we have to do fillings that extend over to that side. I just, it's, it's not fun. It's tedious and it's supposed to be like an easy procedure, but it's just not fun. Yeah. It sounds pretty complicated. What do you think makes a good cosmetic dentist? Hmm. 
I think a good cosmetic dentist can see the possibilities of a smile. So that's what I'm looking at whenever I look at people's teeth, but also you have to be able to bring that to life. So within the scope of your skill. What's something you wish people knew about cosmetic dentistry? What do I wish people knew? I honestly wish people knew that they don't need to get cosmetic dentistry. Like just because everyone else is getting cosmetic dentistry doesn't mean that they need to because it's an irreversible procedure and sometimes it doesn't take like 10 veneers to make you smile more confidently. Sometimes we can do things a lot more conservatively or step up to that. Um, and you don't need to go like ham redoing all your teeth because your teeth have character. By the way, this is a really nice room. Which room are we in right now? Oh, I think this is citrus. Yeah, this is off one. So basically, this is my hygienist's room. She does all the hygiene in here. Um, and then she does all of her oral hygiene instructions as well. And I rarely work out of here unless I'm just doing a cleaning, which is almost never. I just noticed this. You have a TV on your ceiling for your patients to look at. What other uh, cool things do you have on this room? Yeah, so I would consider this an amenity. They're able to watch like Disney Plus or Netflix and it just helps them to zone out. Also patients sometimes don't know whether to open or close their eyes when they're at the dentist. So this just like takes away that awkward moment. And sometimes it's all about removing those awkward moments. I also, oh, when I was building this practice, I really, really, really wanted this. Um, it's a foot pedal to the sink and it's kind of like that because our previous sink, I was always like turning this on off with my elbow and I just think it's, it's just cleaner. It's like a medical facility. Um, what else? Oh, this one people love. There's a massage function in the chair and it's not strong. It's not like going to be like, but it's, it's there and it just like helps people get relaxed and in the mood. We also have digital x-rays. So if you've ever been like, why is the dental assistant running out of the room to hit the button when they take the x-rays? No more. We stay in the room and we <laughs> expose ourselves to the radiation as well. No, I'm just joking on that. The ADA just said that you don't need to wear these these aprons anymore because the um, the amount of radiation is so low. So it's just it's just the modern times. Wow, there's so much interesting going on in this room. <laughs> Who designed your logo? Um, my logo, actually Fiverr. I found like a random logo designer on Fiverr. It's like you pay like five dollars and then they will do that for you. Okay. Well, who are your best clients? Hmm. My best clients are, are you asking like, what are their characteristics? Just who do you think are the best type of patients? I do think I have, I've gotten really lucky with this. A lot of the patients here are so, so nice. I think the best patients are the ones that are actually kind people and they show up on time and they're like considerate like they will email us or text us or pick up the phone when we're trying to confirm um they will also pay on time and they're just like nice considerate people and we've been really really lucky to have so many of those how did you build up your aesthetic portfolio prior to opening your office the funny thing is i didn't i honestly didn't know if I wanted to be a cosmetic dentist and I was doing cases, but um, I wasn't using like one of these fancy DSLRs. And if you are not taking your photos to showcase your work, that's not even worth posting online. So um, I basically started from scratch when I got the good camera that I could actually post online and not feel embarrassed. <laughs> So how do most of your patients find you? Instagram. Yeah, I honestly don't really know how to use this thing very well, but it's it has like two automatic settings and it has good quality imaging. So um, I can post those and I post a lot of videos actually because the I do a lot of Instagram and the patients find me through there. What room are we in now? 
I think this one is Bloom. This is my restorative room. And so it's, the setup is a little bit different. Um, I do all of my procedures in here. And we have a lot of kind of fun goodies in here that you would notice cosmetic dentist might have. Anything cool in this room? Um, so we have an iTero and this is a scanner. This is actually, these are my teeth because I did many rounds of Invisalign. And what's cool about this is you can see kind of how my bite is. See how I only was biting here. <laughs> so I had to change that. And then the other cool thing about this program is that you can see with Neary. Um, okay, so there we go. So that's near infrared imaging. And for my patients that are like pregnant and I just want to monitor them and keep an eye on them, and not expose them to any radiation, then I can use this and then just go through the teeth and it'll show up like right there. Again, these are my teeth. <laughs> this little white spot means there's demineralization. So I need to be very careful there because it can turn into a full on legit cavity. And my husband may need to do my filling if that's the case. So this thing can detect cavities for you instead of x-rays? It's like another for way to double check yourself. Um, x-rays are still the way that we need to see the cavity. We need to see the cavity on the x-ray. I mean, that's our, still our number one go-to. But this is another way that I can double check the x-ray. And what are the main advantages of having this kind of scanner? I love this scanner. I mean, with this, it's almost like we take a mold of the teeth. So this is, these are again my teeth. And to have all this data, basically let's say I have some recession right on this tooth in like five years, then for me to have that data in the system, it'll actually show me in red that things are changing in the mouth so that we can get to it before too much damage has been done, which is really, really cool. And so I think the way that dentistry is going, it's data driven and that way we can be more preventative in nature rather than waiting for things to get so bad that they need tons of work. Can you describe how COVID impacted the cosmetic field? Yeah, I think um, when people started going on Zoom for the pandemic, they started to really notice their teeth a lot more and their smile a lot more. And so we had a huge influx of Invisalign and also smile makeovers. And how long does it take to you to do a veneer case? Oh, how long does it take like in the chair when I'm actually working on it? Mm, it's, it's longer than people think. So if I were to do like eight to 10 veneers, the patient's here for five hours. Wow, that is a long time. Yeah, but you know, when you're taking off a little bit of tooth structure, it take you know, you have to be really careful with every swipe. And so I really pride myself on trying to do minimally invasive dentistry and I really calculate out what are the areas I need to take away any tooth structure if I need to. So it does take me a little bit longer, but I think to the benefit of the patient. By the way, how big is this dental practice? Um, it's super tiny. It's 644 square feet and actually you've been already in most of it. Have you ever thought about expanding the practice? Yeah. Um, okay. So last year, was it last year? No, it was like two years ago. I was really, really thinking about moving the practice over to Newport Beach because my lease was ending. But what I realized is that at this phase of my life, um, I'm a mom and everything, so I don't want to expand right now. There's only one me, and I really like the fact that I see one patient at a time, and I was thinking, do I need to go bigger and see more patients? And I realized, no, nope, I'm perfectly happy like this. So although I did name my office Orange and Magnolia Dental Studio, I decided to stay here and not move my practice and take on more responsibility. What is this here? This is the photo studio that I have, and it is a pretty small little photo studio. I mean, if I had a bigger office, I would have a whole designated room for taking photos. 
Um, but because my office is so small, 644 square feet, I have to make do with the space that I have. So this is where I put patients. I take all their before and after photos here. Um, these lights over here, these are continuous lights. I know some, de some cosmetic dentists like the flashing lights. I tried that. I didn't like the look of the flash. Um, I like this more. It gives more of a realistic, natural tone to the teeth instead of like a very grayish, flash um, tone, I mean. <laughs> and then I do a lot of videos too, so I think that this continuous light is a lot better with video. How did you learn photography? Uh, again, I am not very good at photography. It's funny because one of my old dental school professors, Dr. Nate Yang, he's really good at photography, and what I ended up doing is <laughs> just buying a camera from PhotoMed and it like literally came all assembled and I just took it out. There's two settings and those are the settings that I use. Cool, can you show me your camera? Oh, yeah. Where did I leave it? I think it's in this room. Yeah, so um, this is like the type of photography that cosmetic dentists would normally have. These are more like close-up shots and these are twin light bouncers. Um, this tends to look good when you're doing anterior work. And I did have that O-shaped one, the circle one before, and that one I, I didn't think looked as good for the anterior work. I mean, photography in itself is almost like a stylistic thing when it comes to being a um, dentist or practice owner or cosmetic dentist. So what's in this door over here? Um this one? Right over here, yeah. Oh! It's so dark in there. <laughs> it is. It's the um, sterilization room. I'll just give you a quick peek. But this is where we store everything, obviously. It's nice and organized. But also, we have our compressor and our vacuum in here as well. It's like, you know, this is like old practice. It's been here for like 70 years or something like that. So some of the stuff in here is really old. This is going to sound like a silly question, but what's a compressor? Oh, so a compressor, everything in the dental office is plumbed underneath. So a compressor is what runs our drills and the vacuum is what suctions everything. So like when you go to the dentist and they put the little suction thing inside, it sucks all the stuff. So um, the compressor is, is down underneath here. And do you want to hear what it sounds like? Sure. It is so loud. They have newer, better compressors now, but mine's old. So why don't you go like way over there and just take note when I turn it on how loud it is. Okay. And I'm even going to close this door. That is very loud. It is loud. And so when I was um, thinking about moving the office, I was there's like this new compressor that I was really interested in from ADAT. It's quiet. And I was thinking about also getting it for this office, but I had just remodeled the inside over here and I was like, no. And I had just bought this compressor too. I had asked the guy like, is there a more quiet one? He said, no. So I got this one. I should have done more research. Um, but we were down compressor and I was like, just replace it ASAP. Anyways, I'm gonna turn this off because it's super loud. <laughs> Okay, so are there any other rooms we haven't gone into yet? Yeah. I haven't cleaned this one though. Do you guys want to see it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed to show you, but you can come on back. So over here, I actually remodeled this whole space. Um, that, that room with like all of our su supplies, I had remodeled separately before because we had a flood in the practice. So that's why that room looks a little bit different than the rest. This room, I ran out of money in my budget to do. So the floor is the same, but I didn't paint it or anything like that. Well, we did paint it, but not the stuff that I had planned to do. But anyways, come in. I'm stalling because it's so messy. <laughs> Have you ever thought about making this last room into another operatory or chair? Yes, I did. I actually measured it out. It's slightly too small. I think you could fit like a hygiene chair in here if you really, really wanted to, but then I would have to plumb the whole thing again and I was just like, oh, it's fine. So what do you do over on this computer? 
Um, this is where I type up my notes and my hygienist or my assistant takes x-rays and I can check over here before I go in and meet the patient. And I also design cases and things like that. What's this thing up here? Oh my God, that is the lifeblood of the practice. This is our server, again, super old school. There are some practices that have like an entire room dedicated for the server, but for me, it's right up there and it all goes to the cloud every single night. All right, I have to ask you, what is this <laughs> spaceship looking thing here? This is the future. This is uh, my 3D printer. So you guys saw my scanner. So everything that I scan, I can design and then print things out with 3D printer. So it's a sprint ray. This thing a bob will actually print it. This thing washes it. And then this thing cures it. And at the end, you will get something like this. This is like a night guard. So what type of things do you uh, 3D print? Like that night guard? Um, night guards, deprogrammers, and... If you notice in my back area, I did not have like model trimmers or anything that's like an old school lab type of thing. I can basically print out anything. So like if I wanted to print out a model, I would just print it out here. No need to mix anything or create a huge mess like trimming it. It all comes done already. So who taught you how to use this? Well, <laughs> the Sprint Ray people, you know, they came and they showed me how to use it and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's pretty intuitive overall. Um, my cousin though is the one that showed me how to design these like night guards and things for free. And so um, there's this program that he taught me and my cousin happens to be a dentist and he's really into the 3D printing world. So he like showed me how to do this so that it literally goes in and there's very few adjustments that need to be made. That's really cool that your cousin uh, taught you to design. How many other dentists do you have in your family? Yeah, that was really nice of him. Like one day I just went to his practice and he just showed me everything. And I was like, I would have never figured this out on my own. Um, but we have a lot of dentists in the family. I, my mom's a dentist, my husband's a dentist. And then I have like tons of cousins that are dentists that are endodontists and pedodontists and things like that. So a lot <laughs> so what's this room right over here um over here is the bathroom it's my bathroom um my personal bathroom you don't have to come in here you know it's okay you don't have to come in here but it is really nice when you are girly to have a bathroom in your personal office because like when i had my baby i was like, pumping and i had to pour milk and stuff and it's just like really nice to have i highly recommend it if you are building out an office to get yourself a private bathroom and what is this door for over here this is our secondary exit uh if we need to escape or escape but yeah we just i get a lot of pr so like it's just a mess in here right now <laughs> so it feels like you really invested in the technology in your office. Uh, did all of this come with the original practice? No. Oh my gosh. If you knew how much money I've spent on replacing literally everything in this practice, every single piece of technology I've replaced. And you think that when you're buying an older practice that you're like getting all this stuff that's working. Well, no, slowly over time, everything breaks down, everything needs to be replaced. And again, I've had this practice for like 10 years, so it's it's all fresh and new, and I spent the money. <laughs> Sounds like it took a lot of time and energy. If you were to do it all yeah. over again, would you still have bought an older practice? Hmm. Instead of starting from scratch? I think so still, because when I took over the practice, I was like, 27. I didn't really know how to run a business and um, I guess some people are very business oriented and I wouldn't say I'm a really bad business owner but I'm not quite driven in the realm of dentistry the way that I think a lot of other people are to run their business. I like I really love doing the dentistry part and having the practice is a way for me to do that. What do you like about all the technology you implemented? I think it just makes people feel more like, like we're being thoughtful of them. So one thing I didn't show you is we do have like 
warm towels and stuff for them. And again, I have an issue with all these amenities, like a, an overflow of amenities that don't make sense. But I, I do think things like that make sense because it makes people feel more calm. I think the one-on-one -on -one care that we do, like I only see one patient at a time. I'd rather invest in that than a coffee bar, you know? And I think patients appreciate that. Okay, are there any other areas of your office that we haven't seen? Um, yeah, but you don't, you don't really have to. It's like a closet. Well, you want to see everything. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's okay. okay. It's like a microwave <laughs> and a refrigerator. Does your family ever ask you for dental advice? Um, yeah, I guess. But again, we have a lot of dentists in the family, so probably not as much as other people that don't have dentists in their family. Do you ever foresee yourself uh, selling any of these products you see on the wall? Oh, yeah. Me and my designer, we had originally thought we were going to display dental products and sell them. But at this point in my life, I don't really want to because then you have to store all the products and make sure they don't expire and it's just a lot more work and I don't think it's necessarily worth it for me. If I ever feel inspired to, that's what this bookcase area is for. So I can like display really good innovative dental products in a very cute way, but I'm a mom right now and I don't have time. <laughs> Speaking of, I just noticed this wall is really shiny. What kind of paint is this? Yeah, so this is Venetian plaster. It's interesting that you noticed <laughs> but these are like the small touches, I think, that help patients realize the amount of care that went into building this practice out. And I customize everyone's smiles for their face. And so I really wanted all of these touches to be quality and custom for this practice to reflect that. What is your favorite part of this office? Ooh, definitely floor to ceiling glass windows this was there from the beginning you guys should have seen this practice before i took over and redid all this it was like an old 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 school practice but as soon as i walked in and i saw all this greenery and all this light i was like i love it it's so small but it makes it feel so much more open coffee tea or soda i'm a coffee girl i only need like two sips and then i'm good <laughs> you mentioned you have a son how old is he He's three. Preston is a little monster right now, but he's the love of my life. Would you want him to become a dentist? Hmm. Mm. If he really wanted to be, I think there are so many other professions. You know, I don't really like hold something in my heart for him for like what I want him to be. I really want him to find what he wants to be and like find a good fit for him and his skills. How has your practice changed since you became a mom? It has changed. I think my mindset has changed. I think before I treated my practice more so like a hobby. And these days I'm more efficient with my time here because every second that I'm here, it has to be worth it because I'm away from my son. Well, it sounds like you're doing a great job. Final question, are you taking new patients? Of course, yeah, I do always. You want it? You need a dentist? <laughs> you could use a dentist. Okay. Well, thank you for letting us ask questions for you and showing us your office, Dr. Joyce. We really appreciate it. Well, it was a pleasure. All right. Yeah, come by anytime, especially if you need a dentist. All right. <laughs> Bye.